We are so excited to have one of my favorite trainings, the Stop Seeking Approval training, uh, because I've spent so much of my life in the ego, worried about the approval of what my employment status was, the approval of what other people, someone I didn't even like, of what I had, and also just seeking the general approval of others. And what I learned was, the more that I learned to love myself, the more I then got the approval of others. When I sought the approval of others, nobody really wanted to be around me. Nobody wants to be around someone that's constantly needs to be reconfirmed and recollected into some sort of value. You need to find this value within. If you feel a need uh, approval of others, seek your own inferior, inferiority. Understand the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious continuum of your own history of what you not only think they do and believe and hear, but maybe what genetically you see within the separation of your own frequency that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, that what other people think to me defines me, my employment defines me, what I have defines me, what other people think define me. And it stems from understanding receiving Remember, you cannot find outside of yourself what you can't find inside of it. So if you're not approval, uh, approving yourself, others won't approve you at all. And in order to do that, we have to understand that it involves and revolves around receiving. The more we receive, the more we can give, the more worthy we feel. And so the best way to receive is, number one, to know what you want. And so we need to prioritize by value what we want each day. And that prioritization, as you know, is taking inventory of your personal experiential giving and receiving values to then prioritize a line, you know, if, if perspective wise, if we're going after what we want, um, you know, I'll give you an example, uh, my value, uh, if when I was uh, playing football in college was about my status, what other people thought, the school I went to, the record we had, the position, how much playing time. And my whole self-worth was based upon the approval that other people didn't even give a darn about for me. And yet, my if I would have taken inventory of my values, I would have been able to see how valuable I was. I would have been able to see and prioritize that, wow, you know, I have extraordinary health. I have great family. I have great friends. I have all great education, all these things. But for me, if uh, you know, I had a lousy day, that would define me on the, on the football field, that would define me. And then I would feel inferior. I'd feel separate. I'd feel bad about myself, seeking approval. You know, am I good enough? T tell me, how's my practice, right? Uh, on the inverse, by the way, because people do seek approval, that we wanna make sure that our intent is aligned with the approval that we give or the sentiment that we give or constructive criticism that we give to others. I still uh, make mistakes as a leader uh, because I'll try to uh, use Marshall Thurber's perturbation methodology to perturbate someone, to challenge them, to seek them. But my intent is to make them better and they may not be in that state of mind to feel worthy enough and it may work as a detriment to them instead of a positive. So remember the duality of inferiority, the duality of seeking approval of others and what interference and corrosion we can create for ourselves, illusions basically that we're finding outside of ourselves by not looking and taking inventory and prioritizing those inventory, seeing synergistically and aligned with what we want. You need to learn and practice to love yourself. You need to learn and practice to take constructive criticism and ask for help and be able to receive that help without any interference or ego involved that you're not good enough or you'll be sought or seen as a incompetent person because you don't know something. There's billions of variables out there. There's no way you can know all the variables. One of the other things that helps uh, with feeling worthy and not having to seek approval of others is to be productive and capable. When we focus in on our own productivity, 
when we focus in on how productive we are, how much value we're providing others, doing things for others, the accessibility that we give to others, how we're accessing what we want, aligned with our capabilities of appreciating the skills we do have and go ahead and seeking the skills that we want or need. And then the same thing with knowledge. We can appreciate the knowledge we do have, but we also have to appreciate the knowledge we need or want and seek that as well. And that will help with your perspective of approval. You will start approving yourself for what you have and also appreciating others for what they have when you're seeking that help from them. Forgiveness plays an interesting role in seeking approval because forgiveness allows us to accept where we're at. We also, it raises our awareness, forgiveness, of when we create limitations on ourselves. Uh, and we can continually expand and grow and accelerate when we forgive ourselves for limiting ourselves in some sort of aspiration or productivity venture that we may be on. It also, you know, one of the most terrible things where we uh, seek approval is when we have either conscious, subconscious, or unconscious repetition of a negative flaw or what we see as a mistake, right? I, it, it's a suffering of some sense. I define suffering different than most people. I define suffering as the process in which we seek the light in what we're doing, the love in what we're doing, and the lessons so that we can expand and grow. Suffering is that process of seeking light, love, and lessons in everything. And if we're doing that, forgiveness plays such a crucial role to stop us from seeking approval because if we're seeking the light, the love, and the lessons, we then will not care or emotionally feel, right? Because we have control of not only our mindset, but our heart set of how we feel. So this is a way to take control of our heart set, the way we feel by focusing in not only on productivity and capability, but forgiveness. Another thing that we need to do is what I do in business. Um, I have a trust and vet rule in business. I trust everyone and I take accountability for vetting them. I trust everyone, no matter who I meet, I look upon everyone as a sponsor or a power sponsor of me, meaning everyone that I meet, I look upon that they're looking to help me or know someone that can help me, but yet I vet them. How do I vet them? Not with scrutiny or skepticism, I vet them to align my truth with what they say, do or hear or say or think or believe. I trust and vet that they're aligned with my productivity and capabilities. And if they're not, I forgive them. And then I use the great chain of feeding to decide how engaged I'm going to be in their lives with them. So if somebody feeds me, I'll be heavily engaged and keep on feeding them. If somebody doesn't feed me, uh, I may just allow that distance to, to grow. If someone bleeds me, <laughs> I will let them fall away. Or, or I will fire them from my life. Um, so, sorry, got that alkaline 88 cleaning my throats. Uh, thank you. Uh, trust and vet for the accuracy of your beliefs. That's what trusting and vetting does. Not only the ac accuracy of your belief in a business encounter by trusting them at first and then vetting them and taking accountability for anything that's not aligned with what you perceive to be the truth, but you must check the accuracy of what you believe to be true uh, as well against uh, the vetting process that you may have. The main crux of looking within us to find without is how do we seek approval from ourselves? How do we seek approval from ourselves? And it does exist within that conscious continuum, meaning consciously we have to say and do all the things that would encourage ourselves. We'd have to set our mindset, our expectations, lowering the bar, doing things consistently, practicing the best that we can, being prepared the best that we can. All of those things allow us to encourage ourselves, to appreciate, add value to ourselves. I would venture to say that seeking your own approval is being kind to your future self. Seek your own approval. And I think using, you know, an alter ego effect, like Herman writes about, if you use an alter ego effect in seeking approval. So if I'm going to a family function 
and I feel inferiority separate, if I feel that I am not uh, valued or appreciated or loved or respected or any of the ego-based emotions that I use to define myself, I change the role. I use an alter ego. I say, you know what? Instead of my uncle who, you know, I think doesn't appreciate me or doesn't like me or thinks I'm a terrible person or business person or, or family person, I'm just going to put myself in that role. And I'm going to evaluate, check, right? Check the accuracy of my belief. That's how we vet it. We check the accuracy through our own experience of ourselves and be really honest and raw with ourselves and say, you know what the problem here is my dad may have been an overseller, back end seller, liar, cheater, manipulator, uh, but I don't hate him for that. I hate myself because I don't like myself because I was one of those and I have a quantum genetic inheritance of great salesmanship. Oh, but and also within the process of that scarce energy of living in a world as a victim, not enough. I got to make sure I get enough over the wall, under the wall, through the wall. I got to do this. I got to do this instead of using the law of gravity in my favor. When we seek our own approval, we're using the law of gravity to say, okay, if I put forth the effort, right? If I believe and have faith in the accuracy of abundance of a world of more than enough of everything for everyone, the law of gravity will tell me that if I put the effort forward, that what exists will come down to me. That's what gravity does. It all comes down to me. So how important is the law of gravity with the law of Goya and coordinates with the law of attraction, knowing that there is an abundant universe of everything for everyone and that's why gravity is so important because allow the things to be pulled down to you by working really hard, smart, efficient, effective with statistical success to clear any interference so that the gravity can pull rapidly and accurately exactly what you want with the accuracy of your beliefs, your introspective look at who you are approving your own self. And in this process is the education of finding and seeking and suffering, right? Finding the light, the love and the lessons within ourselves to try to understand why you're seeking approval in the first place. And the way that I do it is I use the same ferocious Buddha technique of identifying the way I feel. And so when I don't feel good, when I feel and understand that why, why do I care what that person thinks? That's usually the moniker of attention that I give to it. Why do I feel, why I'm so worried what these people think of my training? Why I'm so, I don't care. I don't care what they think because I can't control their mindset, but I can control mine and I can put all my energy, emotion and suffering towards my mindset that I'm going to educate, empower over a billion people to be happy, whatever it is that I desire in my own existence with no judgments or conditions to others, but simply for me without judgment and condition. And I need to notice my self-talk and all the other things from taking inventory, productivity and capability, forgiveness, trusting and vetting and the accuracy of my beliefs, learning to love me, encouraging myself, being kind to my future self and understanding that's why I seek approval, but I should seek the approval of the right person myself. And if it's of someone else, I'm gonna use the alter ego effect to put me in the place of the person that I'm seeking approval of, to learn and suffer the light, the love and the lessons of why it was so important that that person respects how much money I make or what job I have or what car I drive or you know, pressing people I don't like even, why does that even matter? What difference does it really make other than wasting energy, time and emotion that I could be spent and utilized to help other people? And so let's look at some of the things that I have found within myself that I have studied and practiced. Remember, in the context of what we're doing, this is a study. I pay attention to, uh, focus in on with clarity, balance, and focus, balancing my values, uh, and give intention through the law of Goya, what I think, say, do, believe, the self-talk and the vetting and the activities and the productivity and the capabilities, all of those things. And I take that attention plus the intention, and that's what allows the law of gravity to take over and the law of Goya to pull down to me everything and attract to me through the law of attraction what I want, and I practice it.
So I understand that everything has compound interest, understand that it will happen in its own time. And I stay present with that and I study it and I practice it. The first thing that I study and practice is my low self-esteem. So in order to figure out that self-esteem, we wanna make sure um, that we understand how valuable we are. And for the mindfulness tools for me are gratitude, right? If you are gracious for everything, your self-esteem goes up. If you're forgiving, your self-esteem goes up. If you're accountable, your self-esteem goes up because you're living in spirit. So in other words, when we're in spirit, we're inspired or inspiring others, or we're enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of our potential, then we know that we are increasing, compounding in interest, our self-esteem. And next week, we're going to talk about stop procrastinating and how procrastination is giving you know, pain or suffering the wrong definition of a stop sign. Pain and suffering are just turn signals to put us into a better place to increase or expand all the things we want. And one of the number one things I want you to increase or expand is your self-esteem. Utilizing those steps I talked about previously, utilizing everything you can to have the right thoughts, beliefs about yourself and loving yourself. Learn to love you. And let's just, there's no lower high esteem. Let's just increase our esteem. Let's increase our esteem two times four, eight, 16. It'll incrementally grow, expand and build and build. And the more you love yourself, the more others will love you. I am love. Therefore, I'm loved, not I'm seeking love in order to get love. I am love. Therefore, others will love me. Great distinction of what we can use. Um, the next one is uh, do it now. Uh, once again, uh, staying present uh, is the best way to effectuate this compound interest in our own egos. Uh, that employment status, what we get what other people think. The ego is not your amigo when it comes to procrastination, like we'll talk about next week, but doing it now resolves all of it. When you're doing something now, we're focused in on the moment and you can choose your actions consciously, leveraging your subconscious beliefs of what you have and even your personality traits, your characteristics, obsessions and addictions that exist in that continuum in your unconscious. And it's unaffected Right? When you choose your actions consciously and wisely through that continually, it's unaffected by the hurts of your past. Right? That's what creates the hurts is we have experience, you know, just like any type of suffering or pain, put your finger in a fire, it burns, and somebody burns you again, you're reminded of that, recollecting it, remembering it. You get what I'm saying? And so what we want to do is be unconcerned by the worries or the hopes about the future. No regrets of the past. Stop worrying about the hopes and the worries of the future. And when we concern ourselves and where we're at and who we are and how much we love ourselves, how we're improving, expanding, enjoying the consistent, everyday, persistent, without quit pursuit of your potential, it's going to be incredible. Now, what else are we studying in practice? So we're studying uh, inventories of values, esteem, doing it now. We're going to study, of course, our time. And many of our thoughts and feelings are locked into our subconscious mind and putting them into a list, a calendar, some sort of writing can bring them to our awareness. That's why vision boards work. That's why writing books and poems and doing videos work because writing about the way we feel can and think separate the negative ideas or energy that we have about ourselves from the truth of where we really are. Now, I'm not one to say who we really are. I always say where we really are. And I want everyone to think about the distinction in self-esteem and approval is that I am where I'm supposed to be at the right way at the perfect time, angling to something better. And I have faith I'll end up somewhere better than that. Who I am changes every day according to the values that I have and the pursuits that I take with the personal experiential giving and receiving values in mind, using my daily practices. But if I'm not studying where I am, utilizing time, then I am going to diminish my capacity 
to improve, to expand and feel good about myself or better about myself or not allow others to make me feel bad about myself because I have complete control when I'm studying that time of where I am. That will determine who I am. And that truth is who I am from where I am in that standpoint. So in order to do that, of course, we need to be aware, but recognize of how we respond uh, or react. I'd always tell people you have one, <laughs> excuse me, one action. You have one action every day. That's why I meditate first thing of the day. I set myself up at the highest frequency. My today actually starts last night at 9 p.m., right? I think the best workout I do every day beyond the minimum of an hour a day on my health is the eight hours or so of sleep that people get. That's the best exercise that you can have. And the warm up to that is what I call an unwinding routine in order to effectuate that warm up of what I want. And in order to do that, I have to wake up in the morning at my highest frequency and start meditating to find neutrality, which neutrality or truth is the highest frequency you have. Not winning or losing, failure and success. Neutrality is the highest frequency that you can have. And in order to do that, we need to know our reaction practice. How are we practicing our reactions? Because once you determine your first action, everything through your unwinding routine till you pass out is a reaction to what has occurred. And so I focus my muscle just like on uh, focus, you know, we, we talk about multitasking, we can only focus on one thing at once. So I practice moving back and forth. And so people, it appears if I'm doing six things at once, no, I'm just doing one thing at once. I'm just quickly reacting, going back and forth, refocusing. So I make a practice of reaction. And utilizing as an indicator, fear, right? Pain, suffering as an indicator uh, that my reaction could be quicker uh, in the neutral position, in the highest frequency. So I need to evaluate the thoughts and the feelings that I'm having so that I can recognize how I'm responding or reacting to the pain, suffering, and fears to create a moment between my emotions and my actions. I'm trying to create a moment between how I feel and how I react. That, that's the practice right there. That's the delta that most people don't live within. There is, it's because we're in man-made time. So we can't perceive the speeds of thought. They're far greater than the speed of light. We can't conceive just like we can't conceive the size of a community anymore because there's billions of people that can see this webinar or training or see videos. I mean, it's unfathomable, but there is a moment, right? I love to practice moments and minutes. There's a moment between emotion and action and you can practice controlling that moment. And you can imagine what that does to your self-esteem when we can go ahead and do all of these things you know, that allow us to be aware that maybe we do have control of our mindset and we can do alter ego practices or capability or look and see how we can find the light, the love and the lessons in ourselves. And we can choose to respond in a proactive or healthier way. Our reactions can be pro-actions. That delta is what determines whether it's a reaction or a pro-action. I'm suggesting that practice making everything be a proaction for yourself. Make it a positive action to the reaction to the reaction. One action a day, highest frequency, knowing that neutral is your highest frequency, not a success, not a failure, not a win, not a loss, not a mistake, not a right, not a wrong, but simply let's look for that delta, that moment. I am responding when I practice hidden fear, when I'm looking at this awareness, I want to spend a practice time on refocusing and focusing, but more importantly on that moment between my emotions and how I act. And I'm gonna proact from now on. And so are you, we're all gonna proact together. The last things here is we need to look at the totality. So many times as we are set within our own communities, uh, online, in person, via email, media, all of our own communities has its own frequency and ideas. What I want to do is approach our lives in a non-judgmental, non-conditioning way, simply accepting ourselves 
in our own experiences, our own failures and successes and lessons, and that other people are neither good or bad or without pride or shame or without ego. I'm looking within to the totality that I'm a part or piece or parcel in the moments that we're talking about, minutes and moments of oneness. And once I look at things in the totality, instead of in my microcosmic view of, gosh, everyone else thinks I'm stupid, everyone thinks I'm this, or, oh, I wonder if they're worried what I'm wearing. Look, when you walk into a room and you're wear worried about what you're wearing, everybody else that are in the room, they're looking at you going, God, I hope she likes my dress. Trust me, learn to love you and what you wear and the makeup you have and the hair that you have. And whether someone else likes it or not, just remember Dr. Pimple Popper. I do not particularly like watching pimples being popped, but there's millions of people subscribing to this lady. I'm a little bit ego-based envious of her that she has found this frequency of who she is and she loves who she is and she loves popping pimples and she loves all the people that love watching to watch and pop pimples. You, you got to love your pimples and you got to know what those pimples are. You got to love to pop them and let people watch them and love you for you. And that's what's going to make it happen because of these minutes and moments, because of the unfathomable size of what we do. And if you can look at things in the totality, not in the part and parcel in which your experiences exist, but looking within into infinity between limitlessness and infinity, see yourself and love yourself, you can then allow things to come through you for others. And you can live without ego. You can live in mindfulness to help you to develop a sense of connection to yourself and reduce your people pleasing ways. Reduce your, that doesn't mean I don't do that. Everything comes through me for others. Trust me, I'm confident in that. It comes through me for others, but I'm not doing it for the approval of feeling that they are pleased. I'm doing it because I'm creating abundance and joy and happiness. And that it allows me to come through the people pleasing ways by allowing you to stop the autopilot thinking between those emotions and the reactions and the behavior that keeps you from jumping to please others without thinking of your own receiving. You need to think about you first. You can't give what you have. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. The best way that we can is to understand that we have to allow things to come through us for others without all of those separations and interference and corrosion that we're talking about. And how do we make the E-G-O just O-O-O, nothing? How do we make and give ourselves egoectomies? How do we do it? Detach our emotions. We have to learn to find the moment between emotions and reactions. We have to have non-attachment. We have to let go. We have a goal of mindfulness, not of objectivity. We want to let go what we think or should do or what we can do and what other people think of it. We need to trust only one person, ourselves, because we are connected to everything and everyone. We need to trust that. We need to love ourselves. Stop seeking approval of anyone else but you. If you can focus all of those things by taking inventory of values and productivity, capability, forgiveness, trusting and vetting, learning to love you and encouraging yourself through all the conscious continuum to understand why do I seek approval and most importantly, study and practice it. And let's live and find and expand the moment between emotion and action. That's where we wanna live in between emotion and action and be able to process how much appreciation through gratitude, forgiveness and accountability we have. And if you can do that, I promise you, you will be happy seeking approval and suffering the light, love and lessons within yourself so you can empower others to empower others as well. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Remember, if you saw parts of this, missed it, want to replay it, it's featured on Spotify, on Entrepreneur, on every platform. If you want the exercise guides, my book for free, those are all for you, david at dmeltzer.com. You can join my text community, 949-298-2905. Um, we also have a Q&A session now. So uh, let's get this going here and open it up to questions. We are not done, don't worry. Here we go. 
What are the ways to get funding for my staffing firm? Oh, next week's training is stop procrastinating. I will make you efficient, effective, and statistically successful. We will get you motivated, transitioned, and inspired at all times. What are the ways to get funding for my staffing firm without being beholden to a VC that will try to alter my business model? Well, that sounds like a lot of predetermined what you don't want. If I was raising money and I want to get funding for any one of my firms, I'm going to focus on the value that I provide and I'm going to create a structure that anyone can invest uh, for, for any amount. I could have two classes of investment, one for strategic investment, VC investment, that I can be very stringent upon the operating agreement and the control. And then I can have a general pool of investment where anyone that wants to throw a couple of dollars at me because they love me, like me, believe in me, we can do that. And so what you need to do is get a little bit of help more than happy. Email me, david at dmelter.com. We uh, have a private group that can help with this, networking. This is a very common problem. You're looking at things backwards. You need to look at the value that you have and create the necessary structures for investment in what you want at the valuation that you need and the timing and risk tolerance that's involved in figuring that out. I'm happy to help you, david at dmelter.com. Pointers on being better recruiter and overcoming mental blocks. Um, well, first of all, uh, recruiting is sales. Uh, and the steps of those are one, you need to get better at stimulating interest, knowing that 80% of the people that you talk to are not going to answer or respond. Also know that what you're looking for through an ask and attract strategy is people with an open mind. Uh, so my philosophy in recruiting and selling is I just need to find someone with an open mind so I can ask how I can be of service or value to them and then lead them through closed ended questions to see if they could help me or if they know someone that could help me. And on average, people know about a thousand people that can help so I can reach thousands and thousands of people in person on the phone, email and media, radio, print TV, social media. I can hit them all up. And I assume in that process of stimulating interest, in transitioning the interest, once I do have it stimulated, I get mental blocks of sharing that vision. How do we overcome mental blocks? Well, we have to practice and study. So one, identify, number one, what you're afraid of, what, what your uh, block is. Two, stop. Stop doing it. Breathe. Think about how separate you are. Think about, you know, some of the key mantras that everyone can use if you have blocks is, this is effortless. This is effortless. It'll all happen at the right way at the perfect time. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm just angling, utilizing the law of gratitude, the law of Goya getting off my ass and the law of attraction to allow what I'm already connected to, to come to me rapidly and accurately. The more that you combine those two and then overlap it with faith that you're gonna end up somewhere better, your statistical success will start compounding in interest and allow you to get what you want rapidly and accurately. How to practice accountability, how to start taking baby steps when it's not normalizing. Yeah, so especially younger people, accountability is a habit. Right. Number one, distinguish between accountability and liability. OK, because we live in this pragmatic world with rules, laws, regulations that dictate liability, which indicate damages of who can we get rewarded by, et cetera, uh, and make sure, you know, that's not blame, shame and justification. That's just living in this pragmatic world uh, and making sure that you understand the difference between liability. Even if you're liable or not liable, someone else is liable, you still are accountable 100% of the time. And the way that we practice it is we see how many times during the day that we can ask ourselves, number one, what did I do to attract this to myself? I got a ticket. What did I do to attract this to myself? Someone hit me from behind. What did I do? They didn't call me back. What did I do? That person is mad at me. What did I do? That person's not fair to me. What did I do to attract it to myself? And what am I supposed to learn from it? Suffering is the seeking, the process of seeking the light, the love, and the lessons of what we're accountable for. Everything. 
So the more you can practice accountability, the more control you have in your life, the better you'll feel about yourself because you'll have control of your mindset and your heart set, which then will indicate and dictate the actions that you take between what? Emotions and actions, that delta that we want to live within with the highest statistical success and appreciation and happiness. How's my man? Oh, Cliff, I'm doing good. Thank you very much for that. I miss you, my brother. That uh, great family's up there in Vallejo. California. I work on computer and phone for about 10 hours a day and feel really exhausted by 5 or 6 p.m. How can I prove my ability to work longer? First of all, you don't work. Come on. Don't work. Have activity you get paid for an activity you don't get paid for. Give yourselves minimum amount of times according to your values, personal, experiential, giving, and receiving values. So, Two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. You know, if you have activity, you get paid for 10 hours a day on the computer and the phone. Well, what we want to do is make sure that you also have a minimum of an hour a day on your health, maybe a minimum of a couple minutes with your mom or a girlfriend or wife or boyfriend or, or, or brother, or whoever it would be. Start setting your non-negotiables like I have combined with the activity that you get paid for, and then systematically look at getting more efficient, effective, and statistically successful in what you're doing by utilizing a Meltzer kaleidoscope, a little bit of ego there, a Meltzer kaleidoscope, a lens of productivity, how much value are you bringing during that 10 hours, accessibility, how truly accessible are you during that 10 hours, and of course, gratitude, you know, taking that suffering, the seeking of the light, the love, and the lessons and everything, and finding it finding the lessons, knowing that pain is just an indicator. And so if you take your non-negotiables, you know, minimum of an hour a day on my health, minimum of 30 minutes with my wife, a minimum of 30 with my 10 year old, a minimum of two minutes a day with my teenagers, a minimum of one minute a day, which is the most important person in your life, a minimum, make sure they know you're happy, you're healthy, you love them and appreciate them. Utilize your non-negotiables in order to counter balance and allow for you to take a vacation every day. Take a vacation every day. Have activity you get paid for, maximize in your life. Make sure that you are taking inventory of values, asking and attracting, being a student of your calendar. Uh, perfect. How do you make sure you don't cross the line of becoming too egotistical? So ego doesn't work that way, that you could be too egotistical. You could live too much time, where? In ego an ego-based consciousness. So number one, you want to identify what your ego-based consciousness is. Everyone has a primal ego, which is, you know, flight, fear, feed, and the other F word. And then everyone has in varying degrees, a secondary ego, uh, a secondary fears that exist. For me, I've prioritized those to work on them. One is the need to be right, the need to be offended, the need to be separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, worried, guilty, resentful. All of these just allow me to cross the line. So if I can identify when I'm in primal or secondary fear and I can stop, not resist, but just stop. Remember, neutrality is the highest frequency. Neutrality is the highest frequency. Not resistance, not success, not failure, not <coughs> losing or winning. It's simply neutral is the highest frequency that allows the law of gravity, Goya and attraction to take place so that I get what I want more rapidly and accurately, allow it to come through me with appreciation, with gratitude and me adding my values to it to give it away to everything else I'm connected to, increasing, expanding everything that I'm connected to. In other words, empowering others to empower others to expand, to grow, to be happy. So you can't become too egotistical. What you can do is stop, drop and roll quicker and spend less time in ego-based consciousness. That should be your perspective. Nobody's too egotistical. We all should be on a journey of practice and study of spending less time in ego-based consciousness. Uh, next question. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank God for Alkaline 88. Uh, you're right, Portnoy. Uh, here we go. What emotional steps can you prepare yourself with when you know you have a separate yourself from someone you care about. Um, so remember on the great chain of feeding, on the great chain of feeding, people that feed you, you want to feed people that don't, you want to separate yourself in varying degrees, depending on 
how that relationship works and looks. And then most importantly, those people that bleed you, uh, you have to let them fall away. Or if it's critical because they're bleeding you uh, into a great detriment to yourself, you need to fire them. And the way that I do that in varied degrees is, you know, I, I politely always just say, no, I'm not available. I don't answer the phone calls. I quickly text back. That's how I fall away or ignore, you know, someone. Uh, but if I fire them, I use this line, you know, hey, I need to let you know that I don't like myself when I'm around you. I don't like myself when I'm around you. And uh, it's not about you. This is about me. Uh, I'm going to have to disassociate myself and uh, not be able to hang out with you, talk to you, be around you until I can figure this out. Does that sound fair? That's how I have uh, forcibly separated myself. My wife taught me that. She encouraged me. I had uh, some wonderful friends. They're wonderful people uh, that I didn't like myself around. And uh, I, I uh, was very, very, very difficult because I'm so close and I love them all. And they're amazing childhood and, and old close friends. And I love you all, but I don't like myself when I'm around you. And I have too many people I do like myself when I'm around uh, to spend my time there uh, on the great chain of feeding. Is seeking approval related to finding your frequency? I would say how, right? Everything's related, right? If everything's one, just as a clarification for everyone, if everything is related and everyone is one, then it's how are, it, is it related, not if. <laughs> that makes sense? So seeking approval related to finding your frequency. So how finding your frequency is related to seeking approval? Well, if you are um, at a certain frequency and you have a strong signal, it's going to be diminished if you're seeking what other people think of your frequency, because you're not going to have a true signal. You're going to be wishy-washy, camouflaged. I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'm an independent. I'm yes, no, maybe all the time going through a party with six different opinions in order to strengthen your frequency to have a strong signal in a, in a specific spectrum, like my Dr. Pimple Popper example, and have a clear, clear message. Uh, that's how, it is relative to approval because if we know our frequency, we have a strong frequency, we're not gonna seek approval, it comes within, we're gonna consistently try to expand and grow that within ourselves to strengthen our own signal, work within the spectrum of who resonates with that and have a very clear message knowing it's not what I think, say, do or hear, it's what they hear, think, say, and do of, from my frequency of what being attracted and trust in that. How do you find heart set and stomach set. Heart set to me is how you feel. Stomach set is intuition. You know, in many cultures, the stomach is where the main mean exists, your source exists, your intuition exists. And so we have the mind, body, and soul, our mind, our bodies run by our heart, how we feel, and intuition. Stomach set is understanding and trusting that I'm going to make a decision taking out the man-made constructs from the equation and make a true faithful decision, which if time and money and other man-made constructs are taken out, we know where the true decision lies within ourselves, our true intuition. But we do live here in time, right? Man-made construct of time with money, a currency, an object of energy we put into the flow. So we have to blend faith and the pragmatic world with each other. And that's where the mindset, the heart set, and the stomach set all take place. How do you translate slash communicate unaligned values after you have determined that the vibration was no good? I.e., how do you fire them from your life? I uh, kind of answered that already. I tell them I don't like myself. I take accountability. I have forgiveness and gratitude for, for all of those. And I allow them uh, to know that it has nothing to do with them right? Because I can't find outside of myself what I can't find inside. So I don't like what I'm finding inside when I'm around you. So I got to figure that out. And I'm not going to be around you anymore. And it's all about me. No offense, please. Uh, you know, I love you. I appreciate you. I still do the friends that I've had to fire. I still love you uh, all and appreciate you. I just don't like myself uh, in that chain of bleeding. <clears throat> um, your example about football totally resonates with me as a former pro baseball player always doing things for outside approvals with coaches, scouts, managers, et cetera. 
became so obsessed. Oh, sorry. Always lurking around the corner to evaluate me that I became so obsessed with doing things to look good to others instead of focusing on what I could control myself. Oh my gosh. How many times do we practice so hard all to improve ourselves? And then we get up to bat and we start worrying about everybody else and we create interference voids and shortages from what we had expanded and grown with and our true potential. And it actually cancels out the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of our potential when we start looking for that and seeking approval and worried about that. Post pro sports, it wasn't until I recalibrated and learned to be present with myself that I grew. How do you ensure to not fall back into the rap, the trap? You know what you gotta do, Matt, is you got to stay consistent. You got to stay consistent. You know, we don't fall into traps if we're consistently doing the things that it takes to improve, expand and grow and accelerate. When we take those zeroing effects and we take that, that's where the traps start happening again, right? Because we're going back to our quantum nature. And if you want to improve your quantum nature, access and activate the parts of you that have been dead or, or asleep, you're not gonna awaken those things by not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're gonna awaken the things that you used to do. So all of your bad habits, addictions, personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, whatever they are, are going to raise their ugly head very quickly because it's quantum within your being. And the only way that we can shift that frequency within yourself and outside of yourself is simply by consistent, persistent behavior. And you'll never fall into a trap. You might take a misstep, but you're not going to fall into a trap. It's not going to let compound interest in the universe expanding won't allow you to. What does being kind to your future self mean? Well, being kind to your future self is the best advice that I can give. Uh, and what it says to me is, dummy, I mean, David, cancel. <laughs> David, everything you look upon is a blessing. There is suffering everywhere. There is suffering everywhere. What does that mean? David, you're accountable for seeking the light, the love, and the lessons in everything. Everything. You walk, there's a piece of trash. You know what to do. You, there's a grocery cart that's not put back. You know what to do. There's someone that looks sad. You know what to do. There's someone that needs help. You know what to do. There's hungry people. You know what to do. There's thirsty people. You know what to do. There's someone in distress. You know what to do when you're suffering, when you're seeking the light, the love, and the lessons. When somebody attacks you, you know what to do. When somebody judges you, you know what to do. When someone puts conditions upon you, lies to you, cheats you, manipulates you, you know what to do. Be kind to your future self. Live with gratitude and find the light, the love, and the lessons. Forgive yourself so you can forgive others and be accountable. Ask yourself, what did I do to attract this to myself? And most importantly, what am I supposed to learn from it? Life is about lessons. The lessons are going to keep on coming until you learn them. Pain is an indicator. It's a turn signal that you have a lesson to learn, to get to a better place, a better situation. It's not a stop sign. We can all do this together. Be kind to your future self. And the best way to be kind to your future self is look upon everything as doing good deeds. What would a kind person do is what I ask myself in that gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability. How exactly do you forgive? Well, everyone knows forgiveness is a practice, right? <clears throat> because you have to be without ego to forgive. I don't know if I reached the point where I can forgive the unforgivable. Uh, I have a forgiveness training. We have exercises, guides. My book talks about this. I'm happy to sign it, send it to you, ship it for free. David at dmelzer.com. Uh, but forgiveness is a practice. It's a huge practice of mine. Am I at the highest frequency that those <clears throat> situations where I'm seeking approval or receiving judgments, conditions, or attacks, forgive myself and learn from it? It is a practice that I use every single day in alignment with taking inventory of my own values, asking and attracting help and value that I give, being a student of everything with attention plus intention to get the coincidences I want, that great mathematical equation of luck, doing things now, which we'll talk about next week in training, right? The great procrastination, void, shortage, and obstacle. Why are we stuck? Why can't we do what we want to do? Why is it I set a goal and I, by day three, I'm out? Even if I've lowered the bar, why is it? Well, forgiveness interplays with all of that. 
forgiveness plays all of the void between emotions and actions forgiveness lies between that if you want to expand and practice uh, that delta that we were talking about earlier to seek approval practice forgiveness can you explain to people that we are love love is the only thing that is true i think spiritually not many people are privy to this okay so love love is that truth love is the feeling of oneness love allows us to have an egoectomy uh, love allows us to to suffer in the respect that it's the result of suffering love we find the light you find the love and you find the lessons you're in love um, if we are love and we're kind to our future selves and that's our vision then we cannot be attacked. This is why vulnerability makes you invulnerable. You know, the more vulnerable you are, the less attacks you'll get. The less attacking thoughts you get, judgments, conditions, and separation you cause, the less will come back to you as well. The law of gravity, Goya, and attraction still work within the context of your feelings and your perspective as well. I don't think it's necessarily some people um, aren't privy. <clears throat> they haven't recollected it. They haven't remembered it. They haven't acknowledged it, but they will. And it is our job to share, share the stories and share the lessons of, about love. Share the stories and the lessons so that other people don't have to pay the dummy tax. Look, I study history for that very reason because I wanna learn the light, the love and the lessons in history because human nature never changes. When I say that, people are like, what are you talking about? There's so much change. There's been more change in the last seven months than the last seven years. No, human nature is love and it never changes. And those who embrace it and those who find it and look for it live and are loved. Those that find void shortages and obstacles, interference to love receive exactly what they're looking for, what's missing. If they're looking for what they don't want, they're bound to find it. If they're looking for what's missing, you're bound to find it. If you're looking for love, you're bound to find it. And we must look within for it so we can find it outside of ourselves. How to put less stock in the thoughts of others? Well, once again, that's practice between our emotions and our actions uh, and going through all the capabilities of taking inventory, productivity capabilities, uh, self-talk, acknowledgement, loving ourselves, forgiveness, all the things that we went through today. Go back, watch the replay on Spotify, on Entrepreneur, on all the platforms. Check out the playbook. You'll see it there. Go study this stuff. It's part of the practice. The more you listen to, hear, speak, say, do, all of these different things, you start realizing. Also use the alter ego effect. That's one of the first things that I do is, you know, there's a, people out there, trolls, people, haters, I put my ego over and, and use myself as the attacker in order to facilitate understanding why I need the approval. And I see myself in whatever face used to be on the attacker or the approval that I want or the person I want to please. I just go ahead and say, oh, I'm going to do all this stuff for, no, not for her, for me. I'm going to go ahead and use my alter ego effect. And I start doing things for me. Why? Because I'm very confident and intentional that everything's gonna come through me for others. And with that confidence, I am unapologetic about my actions, even if I've made mistakes, because I am consistently suffering, seeking the light, the love and the lessons to improve, expand and grow from what I'm doing. But I am getting better and better at receiving and growing and expanding and I'm able to do so much more for so many more people. I have a nasty habit of overcompensating when someone has a negative view on me. Yeah, who doesn't? I become very narcissistic. <clears throat> How would you fight that urge and be more humble, especially when I'm much younger than the people who talk down on me? If you believe you're being talked down to, then you have an inferiority problem. How can one branch look down on another branch? The branches are part of the tree. You're the same. What I want you to do is make yourself equal and then appreciate the differences. Appreciate the strengths and weaknesses according to the situation, time, and risk tolerance that you're involved in. 
find and look for the similarities of what we're doing. Make yourself equal, then make yourself different. Even if you feel as if someone is looking down on you, replace his or her face with your face and say, why am I looking down on myself? What is it about me that I don't like? What about me am I disappointing? What can I improve upon? I'm suffering here. I'm in the process of finding the light, the love, and the lessons of why I don't love myself. That's exactly what we want to do. Let's go through that suffering. Let's find out and ask ourselves the hard questions and then react with the right thoughts and the right activities in order to compound the interest of growth, of happiness, of acceleration, to increase the pull of gravity by utilizing the law of Goya, by getting off our ass and doing, thinking, saying, and believing all the right things to allow the law of attraction to pull it down to us. Exactly what we want rapidly and accurately. How do you help a spouse or a partner without being pushy when they are introverts? Understanding. You cannot change, like a closed mind it takes a thousand times as much energy to change a closed mind than it does an open one. If somebody's an introvert, the best way is to understand where they're at and communicate at that frequency, understand where they're at. Focus all your attention. And if you can understand and participate in the growth, terrific. If it doesn't work, understand and pray for their happiness. Pray for their happiness. The best thing you could ever do with people you don't understand or people you can't get through to or a closed mind is when you determine that your efforts would be better suited for and with somebody else, the best thing you can do is continually try to understand where they're coming from, alter ego effect, put your face on their face, and then two, pray for their happiness. Increase the love that you have with them. Love cannot be attacked. It's invulnerable. And it's the biggest form of vulnerability that you have. Hi, David. Thanks so much for pitching, Guide. I did it and it was awesome. The results are yet to come out, but I'm positive. Awesome. Um, by the way, Two Minute Drill is filming in a couple of weeks. We are down to the finalists. So if you haven't applied, you have till Monday in dmeltzer forward slash pitch. Email me. Uh, there's $50,000 of cash and prizes on every episode. It's on Bloomberg. It's on Amazon. It'll be on digital platforms. It's going to be everywhere. It's a great show. Two minutes to pitch me, guest judges and prizes, all kinds of cool stuff. And you get great exposure and awareness uh, to your pitch and you make yourself famous. Come join me on Two Minute Drill, david at dmelzer.com. Uh, if you want the pitch guide, by the way, if any of you want the closing guide, the pitch guide, uh, the five to thrive system that I have, anything in my book, you, it's all free. Just email me, david at dmeltzer.com and uh, we will get there. Next week, our training is stop procrastinating. If you have a problem procrastinating, getting out of focus, feeling stuck, you got to come to training or watch the replays. Remember, all of the replays are on Spotify featured there in a playlist. Entrepreneur, all the platforms. You can always join my text community, 949-298. 2905. Uh, and re remember, most, most importantly, remember, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Uh, reach out, david at dmeltzer.com, 949-298-2905. Free books, free guides, free exercises. Join one of my private groups. Reach out to me. We got sales groups. We got general groups. We are teaching everybody as much as we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you tomorrow.